all the donuts are mine. <laughs> yeah. Mana, what is it? Mara Natha. We are here doing an all new episode of HV Fit TV with one of my actual fave, very first inspirational Instagram accounts that I have literally been an avid follower for for over six years now, the one and only Talene Gabriel, who is the founder of Hippie Lane. And she's also coming out with her new book, Hippie Lane, which we all need to have because it is like the epitome of beautiful plant life living and the most gorgeous desserts you've ever seen in your life. She's like, she's probably like, okay, enough, enough. But I'm, t I'm telling you, I, you don't understand. I've, no, I'll I've, take it. I've <laughs> literally followed her for so long. So the fact that she's come all this way from Australia and taken time out of her, you know, pretty short trip to New York City to come and do this with me oh, is sure. just like oh my god. A literally like a dream come true. Oh my god, so sure. thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to have you. And if thank you haven't you. guessed, we're making donuts today. I'm very, very excited. Yeah. And we're making matcha donuts, which I'm really obviously you guys know me, I love matcha. Me and uh, Talene told me earlier that I actually kind of was into matcha even before yeah. she was into matcha. Totally. Just totally. saying. Yeah. Just oh, <laughs> So, so true. I remember reaching out to Hannah like about three or four years ago and I said, what's your favorite ingredient like in terms of in the health market? She was like matcha and I was like, really? I'm finding it hard to love matcha. And then now I'm like a total, totally addicted. So you were before me. Oh my God, I love yeah. it. Um, okay, cool. So let's, we're going to make a recipe from the book. Mm -hmm. We're going to do matcha donuts mm -hmm. that are baked in the oven, not raw. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get it started. Uh -huh. Let's so see. tell me yeah. what we what we what we need to do. Okay, so when I make um, anything baked, I usually oil the tin. Okay. So we've got like a mini donut tin, um, and I will be just putting a little bit of coconut. I use coconut oil for my baking, so we'll just be putting a little bit of coconut oil in there, just so that when it bakes, you can easily pop them out. We also melted the coconut oil so that it would yeah. spread really easily. Because believe it or not, right now outside it is snowing. And tell, <laughs> tell them what else about it. Oh my God. So, okay, there's two things to say on that note. When it's really cold, coconut oil goes really hard. Um, and for recipes, you need it to be super um, liquid. So in order for that to happen, we put it in some, um, some warm water and it went straight into liquid. So that's how it needs to be. Now, the second point on the snow is that I have never, ever seen snow before. So this is like the most special thing for me to be in New York with my girlfriends at Hannah's place and it's snowing and Hannah says that the snow actually looks like a fairy tale today. It, this is not normal snow. First of all, we're supposed to be having a nor'eastern, which means that it's like crazy blizzard snow and it's really intense and you can't walk outside, the wind is going crazy. This snow is just falling like plush, like oh beautiful God. snowflakes one by one. It literally looks like you're in some sort of like fairy tale movie. It's amazing. Which kind of is Talene's life, so <laughs> I feel like it's, it's really perfect and it's, the snow is for you. Oh so. my God, I'm so excited. So anyway, it's a really special day for me. So we've oiled, um, just really lightly oiled the, the tin. Um, and at this point we start off with the flour. Now, I came to Hannah's, we had another idea to make today and then we decided to make these matcha donuts in courtesy of her obsession. Um, and we didn't have the gluten-free flour mix that I normally use, which is a combination of rice, potato and buckwheat, I think it is. So we're just going to play by ear and use Bob Red's Mill, um, which I think is one of the leading brands it in, is. Mm -hmm, in America. Um, and it's their all-purpose um, gluten-free baking flour. So I'm pretty sure it's gonna work um, and we're just gonna give it a crack. So it's about one cup of this that I'm gonna be putting in with her help. And I feel like, you know, that's part of what we try to do here at H3 Fit is just like, you kind of got to go with the flow and see like what you've got available and like make the substitutions. And half the part about making substitutions is learning about what works and what doesn't work and finding out for yourself. So it's a little bit of trial by error, although I've assured us that I think this um, should be totally fine because I bake with this all the time and it's, it's pretty legit. Yeah, and I've heard a lot of people um, who 
follow me and um, when we have conversations online, um, they always say that they love this brand, so I trust it. So yeah. I'm pretty sure we're going to make it work. So we're starting off with that. Um, a good quality matchup um, because you want the taste to be beautiful. Um, so we're using Hannah's House of Matcha here. And as you see, it's like the most amazing green and that's what a good matcha should be. So I bake with this matcha. I also make my matcha lattes with this matcha. And I also use this type of matcha when I'm making any sort of like at home DIY beauty thing. So mm. I some people talk about different ceremonial versus baking versus drinking mm. um, grade of mm. matcha. But I find that this matcha is Versatile, so probably. versatile and mm. delicious mm. and so vibrant in color. I don't like when a lot of matchas are kind of like a dull green. Oh, it doesn't taste good. No. Yeah, it tastes really bitter. So and this... I find a lot of like the USDA mm. organic matchas are dull in color. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't necessarily always trust the certification. Common back home as well. Um, they're mostly light green and when you find one um, that smells like this, and looks like this, um, you're onto it. Mm -hmm. So it's one tablespoon, approximately. Okay. Um, and so that's what we've done there. And then um, we've just got a pinch of salt. We like to use, yep, sea salt, Himalayan salt or Celtic salt. They're really good salts to use. And so a pinch is pretty much something like that. Yeah, maybe even, I don't know. A, I little, do, more? Do, a little more? Okay, a little more. Okay. There you go. So that's that, um, and then we, Matcha mat is amazing with lime. So in this in, in this recipe, I've, I've I matched it with lime and also in the end with a peanut butter glaze, mm. um, which just tastes unbelievable. So with the lime, I feel like that would also be such a good um, cocktail. Oh, okay. like I'm, a matcha yes. cocktail with lime. Oh Here, you God, take yeah. this. I'm gonna yeah, go get that. Oh my God, amazing! And you know what? I actually saw that on a menu one time with my husband. So I can't remember where we were. And I was like, what a great idea to have a matcha in a cocktail. Is it oh my gosh, it? yeah, matcha co like a matcha tequila lime situation sounds oh like it would gosh. be so good. Yum, amazing. Mm. And that smell that comes off is perfect. Like you've got a lot of different um, sort of zests here that you can be using. You, because we're baking, you don't want like these huge, super chunky lime pieces. So use um, something quite small. Um, so that you get the flavour through, but you're not biting on the zest when you're biting through your donut. Mm -hmm. That's quite important. I never really think about using the zest, but every time I've like spoken to someone else, they really say how good zest is not only to add a like a really robust flavour profile, but also as like a really beautiful garnish oh, for amazing. like vibrant colour mm -hmm. on top. And it brings out the flavour of the other ingredients as well. Mm. Um, it's an amazing addition and the smell, oh my goodness. And when this is baking, like, oh my gosh, it smells so good. So that's about it. It's sort of like a rough zest of, of one lime. And this is quite a nice juicy lime. And we are going to cut it in half and we're also going to use its juice. Okay. That's pretty much most that's in there, so we can let that go. So we cut it in half. Look, I'm pretty, I'm pretty simple. I use a lot of my hands. I'm pretty messy as well when mm -hmm. I cook. I don't really need to um, to sort of squash that with the with like a lime juicer. Yeah, I don't need to. You can if you want, you know. But I just sort of I do the same. I only same. really ever use that juicer when it's like when it's like a really hard lemon yeah. or something. And, and, like, and lemons have the pips, whereas I'm fi I find that lime oh yeah. don't really, so right. I don't have that to worry about. So I'll just sort of give it a squeeze. And you'll also find that once you've removed the, the zest, it's actually much easier to squeeze. Should I squeeze the other half or are we only doing one half? We're doing both halves. Okay, Yeah. Well, I'll get a little squeeze yeah. going in. Yum. It smells so good already. Yeah, it's amazing. It's such a good little mix. Such a great treat to have when you just want something on the side of your coffee or tea or whatever it is that you like. Um, it's got the nutrients in there that you want. Super simple. You don't need a lot of ingredients and you should probably have a lot of these ingredients in your pantry, which is what I like. Right. I don't want to always be going out to the store. I want to be using whatever I have, um, you know, in, in the home. Oh my gosh, you can really smell I how much. I know. The matcha and the lime have really brought Amazing. out. Amazing. So at this point, we're moving into the wet ingredients. So I always start with the dry ingredients in the bowl, and then I add my wet ingredients. So the first wet ingredient was the juice, 
And now we've got half a cup of maple syrup. We don't have maple syrup on us here at, ma at, at um, oh, well, it sort of is, isn't it? No, it's boiled cider. It's, kind, it's, it's sort of similar. It's an alternative that I found that I, I kind of really like. It's boiled cider, and it's like boiled apple cider vinegar, basically. Amazing. And it's, a it's different. Sweet. It's a different alternative as a sweetener. It's not maple syrup. It's not, um, you know, stevia or anything like that. So it's just... And we need we need it to be liquid. Um, we need it to, to taste sweet. Right. So that's why we didn't use like a monk fruit sugar because exactly. that's like a yeah. Wish I get a whisk. Yes, please. So we've got the syrup in, um, and now we've got the cider. This is apple cider. We put mm -hmm. one. You can start if you like. We've got one and a half teaspoons of that going in. Yes. I'll let you whisk it first, actually, and I'll add it later. Yum! Let me smell. It smells Amazing. like heaven. Oh my goodness, so good. And also, I was this morning I was like, oh, we're going to do donuts. Like, where can I find a donut tin? Which obviously you can buy on Amazon and it could be here the next day, but I needed it right now. So I just went to like a Basics Plus, which is like, you know, wherever. And you, I'm sure you can find them also in your um, grocery store. Mm. Yeah, you can use... Any size you like. Um, I like to use, I like mini ones because I just think they're the right size um, for when you want a sweet treat. I don't think we need it, um, to, it to be bigger than that. I'm now adding one and a half teaspoons of apple cider. This is a plant-based vegan recipe, so there is no, um, there is no, uh, there's no eggs. So the apple cider works um, to give this recipe the rise that it requires. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, it does. Apple cider vinegar works. helps r rise? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah. Yep, it does. I'm using a quarter of a cup of coconut oil. Coconut oil is an amazing um, natural oil that um, has, I guess, have been, cause been popular for a number of years now. People mm -hmm. have really started to realize oh, how good's that color? It's great. Um, I guess the health benefits of coconut oil um, it's amazing. It's got so, so many benefits and it's got a beautiful taste and I love to use it in this recipe. So I've got a quarter of a cup of that and then the final little bit is a quarter of a cup of water. So a quarter of a cup there. What do you think it needs? I don't know. Do you think it's very liquidy or is it supposed to be? Yes, it is supposed to be fairly wet. Okay. Um, I can now, once we've whisked, I can probably just use a spoon to see. So that took like five minutes. It's so simple. Once we've got the ingredients all out, um, it's so easy to do. Okay. And so once we've done that, we um, literally pour it through. I, I, you know, I use a spoon, you know, I find that... Should we do it this way? Yeah. Uh, there's, there's a number of ways we could do this. Me, as I said, pretty simple. I just use a spoon through and I just put it in and then I'll clean up the mess before I put it in the oven. You could pour this mix into a measuring cup. That's probably another good way to do it. Right. And once it's poured in a measuring cup, you can then pour it through. Now you don't want to fill each of them too high because- You're kind of leaving like almost like a, a quarter inch at the top. Yeah. Because it's going to rise. It's going to rise. And when it rises, it'll be just a perfect little donut. This is my yeah. first time ever making donuts, by the really? way. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I know, and now that I know how easy it is to make, I'd love to like make them for my nephew when he comes over. Yeah, of course. Obviously, they're not your traditional. You know, donuts are fried, so we're talking about baked here. Yeah, but I mean, but you know, it's an still HP the fit same. donut right yeah, there. Yeah, and it's still the same shape. It tastes amazing. We're on to the glaze. Yep, we're on to the glaze. Now this is the best part. I'm a total peanut butter lover. I think everyone knows that. So for me, um, peanut butter on top is amazing, but. I don't want to just put fresh peanut butter on top. I want it to be silky and sweet and perfect. Mm. Um, and in order for that to happen, I need to use an ingredient called cacao butter, which Hannah did have in her pantry, but hasn't used yet. So I'm, this is I mean, <laughs> I'm basically like a Whole Foods over here. It's actually outrageous. <laughs> so I have all of these ingredients on hand, but I don't necessarily make them for myself. It's, so it's pretty amazing. I'm so glad you're going to show me <laughs> what I can do with the cacao butter. Because yeah. let me tell you, I, I just, <laughs> it's been in there for so long. Like, oh, it's so funny. 
I would say it's about three tablespoons, which I would say is something like that. Okay. But we just put... How cute is this little guy though? I know. I went crazy over this. Look how cute this is. This is like the mini. <laughs> Everything mini is cute. I know. <laughs> Everything it's true. Is cute. So um, cacao, cacao butter, we need to melt it because at the moment it's rock hard. So we can't do anything with that. So okay. we need to put it over the stove of boiling water um, to melt it down. Um, so wait, can you tell me what else like I can make with cacao butter? First of all, I would have thought that cacao butter would have been brown just yeah. because cacao yeah. is brown yeah. um, and it's very it's white. white. Yeah, so you know what? I'm not sure why it's white. I don't know how it's extracted from the cacao bean, but it is. It's directly ex extracted from the cacao bean. Um, but I don't know why it's white. That's a really good question. You should Google it. So what else can you do with cacao butter? Cacao butter you can use in place of coconut oil. Okay. Um, so again, like if I'm using it in a raw recipe, um, I'm making a raw cake. If I want to use um, co coconut oil, I could use that because it actually it really smells like mm -hmm. cacao. There's a num yes, it does. And there's a number of reasons as to why you might want to swap. When you're making raw chocolate, for example, from scratch, like your raw chocolate for your, you know, a, a chocolate bar, cacao butter in combination with oil is going to keep it harder. Because okay. once that goes cold, it actually goes rock cold. And right, like the way it is right now. Exactly. Whereas when this hardens, it only hardens for a little while until it melts again. Mm -hmm. So a combination of those two ingredients can be really good with making chocolate. Um, it's really good when you're doing a raw cheesecake that you want it to stay firm. Oh my god, it's like so no good. thing, especially like coconut and chocolate mm -hmm. flavors. Mm. Um, so it's a really good thing to have in there because it'll keep it stable and firm, which is what you want with a raw cake, otherwise it'll melt. That also reminds me, I know another place in the city you have to go to to have the best vegan chocolates I've ever oh had. My god, you've got to tell me it's called it Coco V. I'm gonna write it down for you. Oh. It's I had them do my bridal shower cake. Really? Because I wanted to trick all of my friends and have them eat a vegan gluten-free <laughs> cake that was so delicious. I love that. And everyone was like, oh my god, this cake is so good. Right. Hannah, I can't believe yeah. you're eating cake. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, got you, suckers. Oh like, my god, I love that. And they that. were all like, what? Oh my god, this yeah. is so good. I'm but like, vegan and gluten-free things can be absolutely delicious. So true. And that's, that's, that's so the fun of doing what we do. Totally. But people say to me, you know, what is your inspiration? Why do you do this? I'm like, because of that. I get so excited when they try it and they don't believe that it is actually an alternative, right. that it is healthy. Like, you don't want to name it healthy, you just want them to eat it and love it. When you label it to begin with, it's like they've already, some people have a closed mind about right. it. Whereas if you don't tell them and they try it, it mm -hmm. can encourage them. Totally. You know? Okay. So what are we, what are we looking like now? Oh, it's hot, it's hot, it's hot. This is hot, but it's fully melted. Okay. Okay, so be careful of touching this bowl. Okay, so... Maybe... Yeah, okay. Go, oh, yeah, gotcha. Yeah. So we, we can put it in another bowl if it's really hot. Oh, so the time is off. For eight minutes. For eight minutes in there. What's it looking like? They rose. They rose. Okay. Should I don't, we, should uh, we leave it in for two more minutes? Maybe another, mu another one. One. Yeah, another one. Because we want it to be a little bit brown. Okay. Okay. So if it's too hot, which it can be sometimes, we can transfer the cacao butter into another bowl. Would um, you, should we do that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just so that you can, you know, you don't burn yourself while you're making it. Do we want to do it in? You can do it in that. In this? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. Got it? Do you want to take both? Yeah. Okay, so there's nothing like burning yourself, so just be careful. Yeah. I reckon that's about all I'm going to need, to be honest. I'm going to leave that. There we go. Put it down. So we've got the cacao butter in there. So that's what it looks like when it's melted. So then, the, in, my recipe calls for peanut butter, but Hannah's a fan of almond butter, so we're using almond butter in you the recipe. You literally had 12 different types of almond butter in, uh, <laughs> in my cabinet, so yeah. <laughs> not one peanut, but 12 different almonds. I'm just going to rinse this so that we can use it. It's got some butter on it at the moment. Okay, so it's about, I would say. Oh yeah, look oh at that God. creaminess. Look at that. <laughs> All right, gosh, that keeps you on track. I should do that. See, I don't even use timers. Like I'm so ancient in how I work. Really? Dun, da, da, da. Ah, there they are. 
So you need to let them cool in the tin um, and, bef and when they do you can flip them over and you'll have a nice little round um, top there. So that's done. You don't want to overcook them. Um, so you see that they're a little bit brown and that's how they should look. So that's perfect. Now we've got three heaped tablespoons of this. Can I have another little spoon to mm -hmm. like sort of place it in the bowl? Thank you. So here we go, scooping it out into the cacao butter. So we do that three times. Now there is a difference in consistency um, when using almond and peanut butter. Peanut butter is much more oily. So we may get a slightly different texture here, but we'll see what we can do. Cooking is all about um, being flexible and not yeah. being stuck. So, you know, we always give it a go and, you know, and we learn. Mm -hmm. We learn from trying, you know, trial and error. So oh, that's about three tablespoons, I would say. Now I would just give it a little mix oh, of it okay. first. So it needs to sort of, you can, you can keep going, it needs to sort of emulsify into the butter. Um, and luckily the butter's a bit warm, so it'll warm that, because this is mm -hmm. not oily enough in, in, the, in its jar at the moment. So it'll work, you just need to play around with it. Mm -hmm. And then once that happens, and we add the maple syrup, well the alternative to maple syrup, that'll also help for it to mm -hmm. mix through. Oh yeah, it's definitely starting to it's mix. It's starting to mix, so we've got about two to three tablespoons, all depending on how much sweetness you like. So I always start with two, I give it a little taste, and then if I feel like it's sweet enough, I stop there. Um, and if I want a bit more, oh, wow, look at this. Yeah, and if I want a bit more, then I add more. I'm gonna just I'm gonna just stick with two at this moment. We like a salty peanut or almond glaze, so we do again a little pinch of salt. In I mean, there. salt and almond butter, yeah, right? Is like my favorite combination. So there you go. And we have coconut oil, which is about one tablespoon. Look how like perfect yeah, that, that that's is. That's how it should be. Okay. <clears throat> do less than one tablespoon because we've used a tiny bit more cocoa, cacao butter than we than we needed. Than we needed, yeah. So we probably won't need so much of it. I feel like if you even just put this mm. glaze on mm. a tray oh my God. and then put it in the freezer, and you had like some sort of like almond brittle. Amazing. Put some coconut on it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Raw cacao nibs. So good. Okay, this like literally. Taste. What's it like? Heaven. <laughs> Wait, this is so good. I love it. Okay. Is it sweet enough? Mm -hmm. would, would you put that extra in? No. No. Okay, so it's sweet enough. For it's you? sweet. Okay, so that's all we need. Oh my gosh! <laughs> well, they didn't crash and burn. No. <laughs> so it did. It did hold up. Here, let me show you on a cute plate. Yeah, yeah, good idea. So with the substitution of the ingredients, I do notice with my eye a difference in color and 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 texture when I touch them. Okay. But at at you know I haven't tasted it yet. I'm hoping I'm going to get nice results. Mm -hmm. But I am going to give you the recipe that I use um, for the people at home who want to make it. Um, but as I said, if you don't have everything, you can substitute and you can still make it work. Totally. Okay. Okay, I want to see your drizzling techniques. Okay, so there's two ways of doing this. Um, I, I dip it sometimes or I drizzle. And in this case, because I think drizzling looks good on camera, I'm going to just drizzle. So, so the glaze that we made here, that's exactly sort of the texture that you want it to be. Mm -hmm. And so as I said before, because this is consider uh, like there's a considerable amount of cacao butter in here, this will actually get really nice and hard on your donuts when you put them in the fridge. Oh, amazing. Yes, a little hard on them. Wow. Yeah, and I do like a bit of that. Me too. That's, that's what it's about for the styling um, when you do take an Insta pic. It is all about that little mess. Oh, that got a big chunk. Oh my goodness. Yes to this. Oh, look at all that. Wow. Okay, so ideally you'll use a little spoon just to give it what it needs and without going overboard. But I like it like that. <laughs> this looks amazing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'd let it harden. Yeah. Um, and that's the recipe. So super easy. You put it in the fridge for a bit. It tastes amazing when it's slightly, slightly cold. Cold. Because okay. it will harden on top and that's what you want. You want to bite into it. 
and you want that glaze to be super crunchy. Okay, so before I put these in the fridge, I just want to say thank you so much for coming and spending time with me and teaching me how to make donuts that were so easy to make. So also, again, you already heard that Talene said that we're going to put the um, recipe in the bottom, but don't forget to check below and make sure you go to Hippie Lane. You can download her app where all of these amazing, delicious recipes will be at your fingertips. Um, and don't forget to follow Talene Gabriel on Instagram. Again, I've been following her for like six years. She's like so incredible to follow. Like, you won't be disappointed. She's like my number one fan. Seriously, I am. <laughs> I literally am. So um, cute. And if you have any comments or anything, just comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to more HB Fit TV. And I hope you guys love this episode.